Okay, so we're going to look now at the multiplication property of modulo, and um, this is what it is. We're going to prove it. I'm going to show you how it works um, right quick. It's a super fantastic um, way of um, doing modulo theory. So basically the idea, and so I've kind of have it halfway written like a programmer and halfway written like a mathematician here, but really it's like AB mod N equals A mod N times B mod N and then you mod n it again. <laughs> so um, basically the idea is um, you can take the pieces or the factors of something you're trying to take the modulus of, take the modulus of all the factors, multiply all those together, and then mod n it again, and you get the correct answer. Okay, so it's kind of weird. So here's how it kind of works in practice is like, let's say you've got 90 mod 7. Okay, so I mean, in theory, you should be able to go like six. So the answer should be six. All right. But let's pretend that long division is super hard because, I mean, honestly, who wants to do long division? So we have 90 mod seven. So what we can do is we can break that into nine times 10 mod seven. So that means we can break it into nine mod seven and then 10 mod seven, and then we mod seven that whole thing. Now the reason we have to mod seven that whole thing is sometimes when we multiply those things together, we can get something bigger than seven. Um, you won't in this case, but you know, you could. Um, so nine mod seven is two, 10 mod seven is three. So, oops, I said mod n instead of mod seven. Mod seven, and so we have six mod seven, which is just six, so. So yay, that's how it works. Basically, it's a way to break stuff down. Um, this can be a big deal um, whenever you're trying to find the modulo of really, really large numbers on a calculator or on a computer. So like if you're trying to find a modulo of like, you know, I don't know, nine doo 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 you can break it out into its factors um, because the modulo itself is only a number between one, of, one and seven, or I guess zero and six. Um, but whenever you're even putting that into the calculator, you could exceed the um, mathematical limits on the calculator or on the computer. And so if you can break it out into its factors, which is probably how you got such a big number in the first place, this is valuable. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is it's always fun to make proofs because, you know, prove it. Yay! We're going to prove stuff mathematically. Okay, so um, we can say, well, since A mod N... Um, we're going to let, how shall I say this? Let's try this again. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to let, hmm, hmm, hmm. we're going to let a mod n equal some unknown value x. Okay. So we're, we're looking back at this. Basically, I'm going to set this to some unknown value and I'm going to let this equal to some unknown value. Okay. So we have a mod n is equal to x and, um, b mod n is equal to y. B mod N is equal to big giant capital Y. No reason for it to be big giant capital letters. I'm just feel like it. Okay, so since something is a modulus, and we've proved this in other show, shows, <laughs> other videos, since this modulus is true, that means there exists some K in the set of integers such that A is equal to N K plus X. All right, so that's, that's lovely. And then we can do the same thing here. So we can say, well, there exists some... Uh, j in the set of integers such that b is equal to nj plus y. Yay! Um, okay, so what we were trying to show is what is ab equal to. So um, ab is equal to, well, a times b. This is a and this is b. So ab is equal to nk plus y. Oh, x. nk plus x and then nj plus y. And because I am kind of awesome at the FOIL method, I can just go nuts here. So this is true. So I have n squared kj plus x nj plus y nk plus x y. Now, fun fact, um, if I factor out an n here, I have nkj plus xj plus yk, and that's plus xy. Now what we have here is this is an integer, this is an integer, and 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 this is an integer. Therefore, this thing is just some random integer. So I can just call this 
some other integer L, L in the set of integers, um, which is great because I can just basically pretend none of that exists because I don't really care how many times I have to go around the clock on this modulo thing. And this is just, this is a count of how many times I go around the clock. I go an integer number of times around the clock and I don't really care how many times it is. So I'll just, instead of paying attention to all these individual values, I'll just say, oh, you know, I go around a whole bunch of times. So that's basically what we're saying. N times a whole bunch of times plus X, Y. Okay, so um, if we have that AB is equal to NL plus X, Y, where L is in the set of integers, that's true if and only if AB is congruent to X, Y mod N. And that's again, just using our definition of modulo, just backwards. Um, and so that's true if and only if AB is congruent to, and remember the definitions of X and Y. So um, we had X is equal to this and Y is equal to that. So actually we're already done. Um, it's funny because some of these proofs just seem so like, once you do them, you're like, I don't feel like I actually did anything. And a really elegant proof feels like you've done absolutely nothing because it's so obvious. Okay, I'm not saying that this is like super obvious, but it's really elegant and it's um, it's quick, it's short. Um, good proofs are short and easy to troubleshoot. So again, basically what we're doing is we're um, using this trick that we're using for pretty much all the modulo proofs of just rewriting something in terms of that number of rotations around J, 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 or K, 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 K. Um, identifying that we have this common integer here, rewriting it, and then we're, we're actually already done.